I'm Ann Shaw. I'm an architectural historian, archaeologist, and Hoosier. I love exploring Indiana's history and lesser known sites and stories. Join me as we explore old houses, museums, historic sites, and archaeology throughout the state. This is Anarchy. Hi, today we are here at Kokomo Opalescent Glass in Kokomo, Indiana. I'm here with owner Jeff Shaw. Jeff, can you tell us a little bit about the history of the site? Sure. Kokomo Opalescent Glass started in business here at this location in uh, November of 1888. It was at the height of the Indiana gas boom. Um, our company's founder, uh, Charles Henry, uh, had moved here from New York uh, to start his own uh, opalescent glass factory. Um, opalescent glass uh, gets its name from an opal. Uh, when you look at the different layers and colors in the glass, it reminds you of the way light changes uh, on an opal as you rotate it in the light. Um, Henry was going to make this glass for uh, Lewis Comfort Tiffany. Uh, Tiffany invented opalescent glass and he uh, um, was in, it, having a difficult time getting uh, manufacturers to produce it for him because it was a small quantity, it was kind of difficult and, and more of a pain for the mass producers at the time. So with the uh, free gas that was available in this part of Indiana during the gas boom, um, Henry came out here to take advantage of that. He saw an opportunity and the town of Kokomo gave him this property um, to get him to locate here. Henry, uh, in 1889, uh, during the World's Fair, he sent uh, some crates of his glass over um, to be entered in an uh, industrial arts competition, and he won a gold medal for his glass. Uh, at that time, stained glass in Europe was colored, but it was clear, transparent, flawless, very smooth. Uh, the Europeans had never seen opalescent glass. They weren't familiar with the textures. It was all new to them, and they loved it. And Henry had orders pouring in from Europe uh, uh, like crazy. So uh, um, that's really how the, the, the company uh, began to get its uh, worldwide footprint. Um, famous cu customers, of course, include Louis Comfort Tiffany. Frank Lloyd Wright was a user of our glass. Um, today, um, we have our glass and installations all around the world. Everything from the uh, Cadets Chapel in, uh, at, in, at the Air Force Academy. Um, we're in all the Disney parks. Um, we are in a window at the Vatican. Uh, we ship to professional studios and distributors in Europe, Japan, um, all over the world. So how long was this operation in the Henry family? Well, Henry, uh, only ran it for about 18 months oh, wow. um, and it when it, they went into bankruptcy and it was in the uh, ownership of their descendants all the way up until uh, about three years ago when I purchased it. Okay, very good. Can you tell us a little bit about the process of how opalescent glass is made? Sure, we start out, uh, we have our bulk materials. Uh, it's primarily sand. Mm -hmm. uh, our sand is uh, mined at a quarry in Ottawa, Illinois. Um, has been from the beginning. All of all, all the ingredients, the bulk ingredients anyway, are domestically sourced. Um, we use uh, different metal oxides uh, to produce the different colors. But once those uh, materials are, are mixed together, um, we will, at the end of the production day, uh, shovel that batch material into the furnace and we'll allow it to cook in there overnight. Mm -hmm. So if everything goes well, when we come in in the morning, all the glass is melted, the colors are good, and then we can begin ladling. Um, the ladles of glass are different sizes, mm -hmm. um, and we may have anywhere from two to five ladlers, depending upon how many colors are in a particular mix. Each ladler will have his own ladle. The ladle size will vary depending upon the uh, per percent of each color in the mix. Um, they'll carry that material up to the mixing table, dump it there, and it will be uh, mixed together. Uh, mixing is a real art form. Um, if you mix it too thoroughly, um, customers don't like that because mm -hmm. we, we call it overmixed. Uh, if you don't mix it enough, the colors are too segregated, so they're not all represented in the small pieces that the artist will be cutting it out. 
uh, cutting it into. Um, so once it's mixed, it's thrown into a set of rollers and the rollers flatten it out to a sheet that's approximately one eighth of an inch thick. And as it comes out of the rollers, it'll go onto a stone table. Um, once it's cooled enough, uh, the sheet is cool enough to become rigid. Um, the uh, table man will use a push rod and he'll push it into the annealing oven. Uh, the annealing oven, what it does is it cools the glass down very slowly. And then once it's fully annealed, um, in the cut room, uh, we will take it and we'll cut the uh, rolled sheet into our standard sheet sizes. Okay. And when you describe that process, it sounds like it takes a while, but watching it, it happens really quickly. Yeah. Yeah. It is pretty fast. Uh, it takes a while uh, to learn how to do it. Um, there's a lot of variables and they all have to be right to be able to produce a good sheet. And um, Everything from the ladling uh, to the mixing takes quite a bit of practice and quite a bit of time to develop those skills. Can you talk a little bit about some of the products that people make with your glass? Sure. Um, primarily, it's used in traditional leaded stained glass windows. Um, other uh, uses include um, uh, glass blowing. Um, our own glass blowing studio will use the scrap material and remelt it to make art pieces. Mm -hmm and we um, also make uh, items for our gift shop and uh, um, a number of uh, uh, local universities and hospitals and uh, government departments that uh, uh, use our uh, uh, products as uh, presentation pieces to recognize retirements, employee of the month, that kind of thing. The uh, glass is also cast into blocks Dal de Ver, and uh, we're one of a few manufacturers left in the world that does the uh, Dal de Ver, but those are used in lots of different applications. Um, uh, traditionally, they are put, broken up and put together into a mosaic type pattern to form uh, stained glass windows. Um, also, they're used in uh, outdoor sculptures. Um, they're used in partition walls and hotel lobbies, hospital lobbies. Um, uh, Riley Children's Hospital used them as wall tiles. Mm -hmm. uh, so really, uh, there, there's really no limit to the application for our products. It, our customers are coming up with uh, new and creative ways of using the material all the time. Very versatile. Yeah, yep, yeah, very versatile. Now you offer classes and mm -hmm. tours, yep. so people could come here and sort of figure out if they like. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Glass working. Uh, yes, the the tours run um, every weekday at 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you have a if, if you have a group, uh, we'd like you to call and make a reservation. If it's just two or three people, a family, uh, you can just show up and say you want to take the tour. Um, and lessons. Uh, can be scheduled on our website, kog.com, mm -hmm. or you can call us here at the op shop and uh, schedule a class. We teach basic, intermediate, and advanced stained glass. Uh, our most popular class right now is glass blowing. Mm -hmm. uh, we also do classes in mosaics, bead making, and painting on glass. Wow, so. okay. Do you, I'm just curious, mm -hmm. um, do you do tours for school groups? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. just about every, uh, school kid in the region has been through here at least once on a, on a tour. This year it's not been very good for the field trips because yeah. of COVID, but uh, in a normal year, um, September and, uh, and May, mm -hmm. uh, we're, our lot's full of school buses and the place is quite loud with the voices of school children. So <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Well, it's a unique place and it's yep. awesome that it's here in Kokomo. It's yes. local. Um, I love that it's been in business continuously since it opened. Yes, that yes. to me is incredible. Um, and you guys manufacture the glass the same way. Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. When you come into our factory, you're stepping back in time. Mm -hmm. uh, we manufacture the product according to the same recipes, using the same techniques that were in use by Henry mm -hmm. um, when he first started. Thank you to Kokomo Opalescent Glass today and Jeff Shaw for hosting us in our final episode of season one. Stay tuned for season two coming in the spring of 2021.